Hello everybody, welcome back to Planet X News. This is Scott from the Nibiru channel. Yesterday, we had solar winds coming from a large coronal hole on the sun exceeding 2.5 million miles per hour. That is about twice the normal speed and intensity that the solar winds come at our planet. Now, the reason why I wanted to share this information with you, and we're going to go ahead and start taking a look at this information because it is rather critical whenever you're dealing with these solar winds. And right now we're taking a look at a 48 hour loop of our sun from the SDO. And as you can see, if you follow my cursor, the large coronal hole here, that is what was facing our earth and producing these very high intense solar winds and when they refer to the solar wind it's not exactly the wind that we would think of however these are streaming particles that literally smash into the earth now some of them are deflected by our magnetosphere but a very large portion of this does penetrate all the way to the Earth's core. Now, once again, as we are moving out of the threat of this large coronal hole that you see here, once again, we have another very large coronal hole that will be turning and facing towards Earth probably within the next three to four days. So in all actuality, we will really not be out of the woods for approximately 10 days. And after seeing this information and seeing that this large coronal hole produced wind speeds that were in excess of 2 million miles per hour, that was very, very startling because these coronal wind speeds normally as I said, they do not get out of the range of about 1 million to 1.5 million miles per hour. When they are impacting our magnetopause and magnetosphere, as you can see here, they will stretch it, they will bend it, they will distort this magnetopause, our magnetosphere. This is what protects us from the solar winds and solar radiation. And this is just from the last day yesterday now you can see there's a little color code down here to the right usually we, we want to be in the blue or the light blue area and you can see some of the intensity behind the earth and also hitting the bow shock if you're looking at this so i can explain it you see the little earth the white side and the dark side well the white side is facing the sun the dark side is facing outward you can see how some of this energy made its way around our bow shock and made its way into our little earth area now we'll go ahead and take a look at the magnetopause and you could see once again the area where my cursor is you'd want to see this area in the color blue dark blue or light blue but as you can see the intensity is coming in and it is affecting our magnetosphere. Now, some of the reasons why I try to explain this information is two things. Number one, the radiation levels. And this is showing you radiation levels as we speak. Now, this is from the 20th of March. This information will update later on today and tomorrow. However, this corona hole has been facing our planet for a couple of days. The solar winds have been impacting our planet for several days. And what you're looking at here, the little dotted line is what they call the little satellite belt. But you can see just by the color coding, all of this radiation enveloping the entire planet. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be quite frank with you. That's not good. It's just not good for human life. And we've been going through this almost nonstop throughout 2016. And now 
three months into 2017, and the situation is actually getting worse. It's not getting any better. So let's move on to how we look at the solar winds. And this is the real time solar wind. This is a lot of scientific and technical information. This comes from NOAA, the Space Weather Prediction Center. And this monitors all of the activity coming from the sun and the solar rays, or excuse me, the solar winds. Now, as you slide your cursor across here, this is giving you indication of the speed of these solar winds. And like I said, normally they will be about 700 to 850 kilometers per second. When you translate that into miles per hour, it's well over a million miles per hour. But as we were looking at this yesterday, there were points in time where this exceeded 2.5 million miles per hour. That is very, very intense. You're seeing a reading here where my cursor is well over 900, 1,000, 1,124 kilometers per second. And again, Whenever you translate that into miles per, miles per hour, it is exceeding 2.5 million miles per hour. That is one hell of an impact for us to incur. What does this do to the earth? Well, it increases earthquake activity. You will have people out there that will tell you that does not happen. Well, they're actually telling you a lie. They're trying to deceive you. Whenever we have large coronal holes facing the earth and we're being impacted by these large particle streams of solar wind, these particles, these are charged particles coming directly from the sun, they make their way all the way to the core of the earth. They heat the core of the earth up and then we have earthquakes. And this is something that's been going on now for over a year and it's going to continue because of the condition of the sun and what we have lurking out there in our solar system that nobody wants to talk about but i will talk about it because i know it's there everything happening right now to our planet is directly directly related to the presence of a brown dwarf star in our inner solar system if somebody tells you that i'm crazy and you're crazy and they know for a fact that there is no brown dwarf in our solar system just take a look at where that information is coming from it's coming from a youtube troll using a fake youtube account we are getting credible information and we are reading the data and we are translating the data and we know exactly what is happening. Now, getting back to the earthquakes, you're looking at the last 24 hours of earthquake activity in Eastern and Western Europe, signified by the red dots that you see on these countries. We're going to move to a world map. And this is just earthquake activity that the European agency monitors. However, whenever you take and click on the last week, seven days of earthquake activity, take a look at the ring of fire, very active all the way down through the South Pacific. You take a look at Mexico. The, the West coast of Mexico is just riddled with magnitude three and four magnitude earthquakes constantly every single day the whole entire west coast of south america the same thing they're being hit constantly down in new zealand with magnitude four and five earthquakes it's non-stop ladies and gentlemen and it's not going to stop it's going to get worse Now, once again, you can clearly see, we'll just take a look at the last 48 hours. And these are, these are larger earthquakes, 5.7, 4.6, 4.9, 4.7. These are earthquakes that are being felt by people that live in these areas. Moving over to the 
SU or uh, S USGS, excuse me, um, you can clearly see, look, this is the last seven days of earthquake activity recorded around the globe. Those are a lot of earthquakes. That is a lot going on around the world. And if we just pan in to what's going on in our neck of the woods here in the United States, just take a look at California. Take a look at Oklahoma. They had an earthquake in Northern Virginia. They're having earthquakes in South Carolina, Georgia, places where they don't have earthquakes. Now, even though these are small, it is just a precursor to what's going to occur. We've been keeping a very, very close eye on the New Madrid Fault. And if you're not familiar with that, the last earthquake that rolled through there did catastrophic damage. So we are monitoring that very, very closely. There is a lot of activity up in Alaska. And as you can see, this is just the last seven days of earthquake activity on our planet in Alaska. The state of Washington starting to get very active. Montana, Wyoming, even earthquakes in Idaho. But the real caution lies with the state of California. And as you can see, this is the San Andreas fault line. If you follow my cursor, this is the fault line that runs straight down through the state of California. These earthquakes are literally swarming on that fault line. And sooner or later, it's going to break free and there's going to be a catastrophic earthquake, probably over a magnitude seven, which will, that will be catastrophic damage. So ladies and gentlemen, the reason why I bring you this information is not to scare you. We're not fear mongers. We're simply trying to give you credible information so you can protect yourself and so you know exactly what is going on in the world that you live on. You have every right to have this information. The majority of us don't know how to go out there and get it, nor do we have the time to sit there and do hours worth of research to bring you this information. I have the time. I'm going to be bringing you this information every single day. So make sure that you are subscribed to Planet X News and the Nibiru channel. We will be back uploading videos to the Nibiru channel next week, but we will, you know, continue with all of our reports. They will be uploaded to the Planet X News channel. And if you do live in any of these areas that are prone for earthquakes, the next 10 days are going to be very vital. You just never know what's going to happen with Mother Earth. And right now, I'll just put it to you bluntly, she's under attack. Under attack by these solar winds and these charged particles. They will reach the core of the Earth. It will continue to heat the core of the Earth. And just think about it. If you blow up a balloon too much, it's going to pop. And that's basically what's happening. This will create devastating earthquakes, or it will definitely increase the earthquake activity around the globe. So please use caution. If you live in these areas, make sure you have an evacuation plan. Make sure you have things set up where if you have to bug out, you have everything you need to make an escape. This is Scott from the Nibiru channel, Planet X News. Thank you for watching.